G'day. <clears throat> so I'm getting new carpet in my house, which is why there's stuff everywhere behind me. And uh, I'm waiting for the carpet guy. I'm pretty bored. So I figure I might talk about the MBN. Um, I live in an MBN connected area now, and I'm about to get swapped over. I'm in a fibre to the node area of MBN. So I'm not going to talk about fibre to the premises, and you won't learn anything about fibre to the premises from this video. But you will learn something about fibre to the node. Um, so the existing way that we all connect to internet today in Australia is ADSL typically and what that is is the copper from our houses the telephone line is copper and that is connect, physically connected all the way up to something called an exchange and if you've never seen an exchange let's go take a look I'll show you the one in my suburb Puss. So here we go, this is the exchange. This, uh, so there's someone's home, there's someone's home, and here's a building. It's not somebody's home. It's an old and dilapidated building with some smashed windows. Funnily enough, a bit like our copper network. But this is it, this is the exchange. If you were a Telstra technician, you would have the keys to open up and go inside. So from the exchange, all the way through the copper to your house, into your modem, you connect using a protocol called ADSL. What's happening now with fibre to the node is, you're connecting to a mini exchange, if you like, a very small box called a node. The point of the node is that it's closer, physically closer to your house than the exchange is. You'll be connecting again using DSL over the copper line to the node, but it won't be ADSL 2 plus, it will be VDSL 2. It may in fact be vectored VDSL 2 using a profile 17A, but I've not been able to find any proper information about that from MBN Co. I've only heard that from a few fellas online on Whirlpool. So you can tell from this graph, which I took from a Google image search, that ADSL2 Plus really has been the right decision for Australians for quite some time, considering that in comparison to all the other DSL options, it doesn't really uh, degrade all that much the further you are away from the exchange. Or at least if it does degrade, it is able to retain the sp its speed quite well. So the drive that I went for before to show you my exchange, I was about I'd say two kilometers from that exchange. So I should be, according to this graph, getting around about 18 perhaps megabits per second, and I don't. I get about um, 10, sometimes 12 megabits per second. So this plot, I assume, it's assuming a perfect, perfect copper. And uh, that's most likely not the case for you as it's most likely not the case for me. And you can see, uh, the VDSL2, which I'll be on and you'll be on when you move over to fibre to the node, has quite a sharp decline the further you are away from that point of connection. Um, the point of connection is obviously the node. The title of this plot up the top is FTTC speed graph, fibre to the cabinet. But we can just interchange the word node for the word cabinet. I mean, the node actually is in a cabinet. So if you know where the node is that you'll be connected to, um, and you know the distance that you, or at least you can have a pretty good guess at the distance your copper travels to get to that node. Using that graph before, you should be able to estimate what type of VDSL speed you can enjoy. Uh, you can't find that informa the information about where the nodes are from NBN Co. I've looked. They don't make that information public and they cite national security reasons for that. Uh, but if you walk around your suburb, you can find it, which is what I did and so I'll, I'll take you for a walk and show you what they look like. So this is it. It's a green box. There's an ID label on the front and this is the node when they talk about fibre to the node. So the fibre comes all the way from the exchange. All the exchanges are connected to one another via fibre across the country and then there's fibre laid under the ground all the way to the node. 
and then from the node there's a, a point of junction where it swaps over to copper and then it's existing copper to everybody's actual houses. So once you find the node in your suburb that you suspect your house is connected to it's good to actually confirm whether that is the node that your the copper from your house does physically connect to and you can do that using a website called mynbn.info So you go to this website, you put your address in. Now, I'm not putting in my address. I'm putting in an arbitrary address I picked, which I have previously checked. This address is connected to the same node as me. Um, so if you happen to live at this address, I, I don't know you. So, up pops the info. The ADAID for this this premises here, this address, is 2HAM0706. That's the ID for the node. So this is it. This is a node which is servicing an area in Merriweather. And uh, if I go back to the video where we walked to the node, there's an ID on the front that matches this here, 2HAM0706. And this is Oh, there it is, 2HAM0706. So I know that were I to live at that address that I put in before, I would know that this definitely is the node. So now that I've identified where the node is, you can go to maps.google.com and estimate there's a line tool and you use that line tool to draw a line and it will tell you the distance between the two points in the line. And you can use that to uh, guess how far your copper is from that node. So I, since <clears throat> making that first video, I have been connected over to my node and I am getting VDSL2 services through an ISP. They're called RSPs now, not ISPs. And uh, according to the graph, I, I, so I was about 250 meters away from that node, I estimated. And um, that graph told me that I sh ought to expect about 70 megabits per second. And when I got my VDSL2 modem from my RSP and plugged it in and synced it up, it did sync it pretty much exactly 70 megabits per second. So uh, it's been pretty good. The actual throughput is in real terms about 68 or 65 megabits per second, which is uh, it's pretty good especially considering I've been used to lower than 10 megabits throughout the majority of my life. Um, so that's quite good and it's about 25 megabits per second up. However, during peak times I'm experiencing what from what I can gather reading forums online, specifically Whirlpool, I'm experiencing what a lot of people are experiencing, which is during peak hours uh, the, it drops right down, the bandwidth drops right down. In fact, last night I was getting about two and a half megabits per second at around about 8 p.m. So to show you exactly what I'm talking about, I um, graphed a whole bunch of speed tests that I've done. So I actually wrote a small program in Python, and uh, which I'll show you. So it just every half an hour, this is a Unix timestamp. That's actually a date and timestamp. Um, an entry is added in here and that's my uh, speedtest.net results for download, upload and ping response time. And I plot that uh, into an SVG file. So this is what it looks like. So each of these data points is half an hour, um, another measurement's taken, and it rips along at, uh, let's see, I get pretty much 60 to 65, about, yeah, about 60 to 65 megabits per second down and about 25 megabits per second up, or 24 megabits per second up. So that looks like a, quite a consistent service all day. And then, 1600, 4 o'clock, it, you know, it's a pretty, pretty obvious decline here. So this, this to me looks like very obvious congestion on the network. But I'll certainly be using this graph um, and showing my RSP that I'm certainly aware of the congestion issues and it ought to be fixed, I'm sure it will be. So uh, look here, it's f so five and a half megabits per second down, that's actually worse than my ADSL2 plus service. So that looks like it was at, um, let's see, half past 10, no sorry, half past nine. Um, 
So I've only been running this. I only got connected yesterday, and I the congestion was awful. And uh, I thought I thought to do this, so I quickly knocked this program up. And um, I had the first measurement, uh, funnily enough, was taken at midnight. So that's quite a nice clean snapshot from midnight onwards. And it's actually the the graph is ending at midnight tonight. So this is a 24-hour window. So yeah, um, it will look better after I have a few weeks worth of data but there it is there, there is a issue of congestion at the moment at least there certainly is with my node and um, there it is